Welcome back to part six of our live training series here with our Honda K-Series engine and a Link G4X plug and play system. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna be finishing up our calibration process, looking at our high cam or VTEC calibration tuning. We're gonna be looking at fuel spark, variable cam control, as well as setting up our VTEC engagement point using this Alpha N strategy. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at doing our cold start tuning as well as our wide open throttle VTEC and part throttle tuning. We have a lot of things to discuss. Let's take a look here at the very first portion of our tutorial of how we're gonna go about dialing in our cold start. So this is gonna be our cranking fuel, our post start, and our warm up enrichment. Let's jump in here and talk about what we have going on. So first things first, we know when the engine was warm on our low cam using our fuel table one here, we had everything dialed in. We had the uh, actual lambda and the target lambda matching each other with minimal closed loop correction. Now when we fire off the engine cold, we're gonna find that we need to deliver a little bit more fuel to the engine so it runs in a stable manner. We don't want it too rich or too lean. Uh, we wanna make sure the engine can crank, fire, and run appropriately. And that's where our cranking fuel our post start fuel and our warm up enrichment fuel is going to come into play. So the cranking fuel is going to be what we inject into the engine for it to crank, fire and run very quickly. If we go here and just move over to our fuel trims page, we're going to find that's going to be responsible here from our cranking enrichment table. Now, we also find that once we've cranked the engine over, it hits about 300 RPM, 350 RPM. The link's going to consider the engine to be running in the run mode. It's going to take a look at the normal volumetric efficiency, air mass and fuel mass uh, calculation coming from our VE table here, so what we've already developed at idle, and then it's going to add on top of this. So this is our base pulse, but this is where it comes from, and then we add on top of it using our post start enrichment, and then finally our warm up enrichment. So the post start's used for the first maybe five to 20 seconds after the engine's fired off to stabilize combustion, and then we switch over to our warm up enrichment. As long as the engine is cool in the cool temperature, we can see here it's gonna be applying a correction factor. So this is gonna be a percentage multiplier against our pulse width from the main VE table, the main air mass calculation, and then the warm up's gonna be doing the same thing. So the post start is a temporary fuel adder, and then the warm up enrichment is gonna be more of a long-term adder, purely based on our coolant temperature here. Now, a couple things. We had to go in here when we were in the warmer temperatures, and we've increased our cranking enrichment table values from 20 to 60, so we needed a lot more cranking fuel when the engine was warm. If we take a look now here when the engine is cold, we're gonna find that we have relatively low cranking values compared to when we were warm. I'm gonna increase my cranking VE values here. So at 68 and 86 degrees, I'm gonna put them at 120, and then between 86 and let's say 122 here, I'll do shift H and interpolate. So I'm gonna go start to descend my cranking fuel value, my percentage multiplier, uh, as I get up into warmer temperatures. We don't need as much fuel when the engine is warm for cranking as when the engine's cold. We have what's known as a wall wetting effect when the engine is cold, where we have poor atomization of fuel coming out of the injector because we haven't built up heat in the intake manifold and the intake port. So what's gonna happen is the fuel's gonna be spraying out of the injector, but it's gonna be essentially creating a, a droplets and it's going to hit the intake valve and the intake track of the intake port and it's going to stick there. There's gonna be a, a certain portion of every auto cycle that's gonna stick. And we're gonna find if we don't overcome that, we don't pump in a little bit more fuel, it's gonna run lean. So it's gonna be including for our cranking, we need a bunch more fuel in our cranking. That's gonna be for the post start. We can take a look, we have a higher post start multiplier here for the cold engine compared to the warm, and then even a warm up enrichment. We're having more fueling added here on the cold temperature compared to the normal warmed up temperature. So. The main VE, the main air mass calculation, that represents the engine in its warmed up state. We have these multipliers or compensators that is gonna allow the engine to run uh, more appropriately at a better air fuel and a more stable combustion when we crank, fire, and run the engine. And that's what we're gonna take a look at now. Since we've already dialed everything on a warm engine, we know it's 100%, we can take a look at this and see what the lambda is reading compared to the target lambda. Um, and then we're gonna find that uh, we can make our adjustments here accordingly. Now, we have our closed loop fueling correction. We're gonna pay attention to what that's showing. It's adjusting as the engine is coming up to operating temperature. If it's too rich or too lean, we can come in and make adjustments in our warm up enrichment table. We don't wanna make adjustments in our normal VE table because we've already proofed that on a warm engine. So hopefully it makes sense. We're explicit, ex explicitly going in here and adjusting just the post start and the warm up enrichment table. So we're gonna to have to go and test this out. There's really no better way to do this than to crank fire and run the engine. 
I am on the second day, so I'm a completely different day. The engines cool down overnight. We really only get one to two shots of doing a proper cold start a day. Uh, so in this case, I would, if I'm going in and testing this out, um, we're gonna find that I would have to go in, let's just say the cranks fires and runs and we make our adjustments. I can't check it until the engines cool down again. So I'd have to go take a look at it another day, but we can get very close paying attention to the details of how the engine cranks and the fires and the runs. And then again, what the fueling is doing. This is something we absolutely have to sort out. We don't want the engine again to be too lean when it fires off, it can stall out. We don't want it too rich and starting to wash the cylinders down and fouling out the spark plugs. Um, let's see what's gonna happen here. So I'm gonna go up into logging. I'm gonna go in here to record. Now we can see we're starting to record. So it's gonna allow us now crank the engine over and see what, how it's going to perform. See how many cranks it takes to fire off. And then ultimately, what our fueling is doing when it does fire off. Now, I do have an AM X Series wideband. That X Series wideband takes about 20 to 30 seconds for the heater circuit to come online to heat up the sensor completely so it has an accurate reading. We're gonna find on our Lambda reading, it's not gonna be broadcasting an actual valid Lambda reading out until that heater circuit warms up. So that's just something to note. All right, let's make sure it's out of gear here. Let's try it. Let's see how many cranks it takes to fire here. So. Now, it was a little bit weak there on cranking, trying to- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.